Hello everybody, this is your host Nino and in today's adventure we shall be exploring an operating system for the ASUS EEE PC called Slitas and being a Linux distribution. But perhaps a few words of history before we delve into matters. Well, the ASUS EEE PC is one of the first, if not the first, and clearly most iconic devices known as netbooks. These were sort of little laptops killed off by essentially smartphones and tablets, because why would you be typing on a minuscule keyboard and looking at the screen with a huge bezel on something as thick as a club sandwich when you can have more elegant solutions? So I understand why they died, but I clearly admire how they came to life, for they were the fruit of an idealistic project called the One Laptop Per Child initiative, which was creating this thing here, the X01 laptop, which was devised as an electronic uh, development and exploration tool for kids in developing countries. I loved the initiative. I was actually following it with much curiosity and I was truly hoping that they would at some point be just available on the general market. They had some things like give one, get one and what not, sub-projects, but they never took market penetration in any way seriously and left that to other companies. And along came Asus and created that awesome little gadget. With certain limitations which are innate to it and somewhat hard to circumvent perhaps. Number one being its memory, namely RAM is just 500 megabytes. Number two being, again, its memory, this time the hard disk being just 4 gigabyte. And that happens if you get the nice standard model. For there was also a weaker one with just uh, half as much RAM and half as much disk so quarter gigabyte RAM and just two gigabyte disk and there was allegedly one with only one gigabyte disk but that was for all I know only available in China and I won't concern myself with it here. So having that thing in mind, this, this nice little gadget, one sometimes asks what can I install onto it? I even see this question sometimes asked in my retro computing groups, which I feel as a sort of slap in the face. I mean, what about this science fiction device is retro for you? But I understand the concern. At the time, there were two operating systems available for it. The one was the Xandros, which you can see here sort of imaged, a not too good Linux distribution, in particular lacking any sort of serious development tools and, and you know things which make life nicer. It felt a bit like a cage. These are the programs you have, use them, love them. The other one was Windows XP, and of course you can enter into an odyssey of installing Windows XP on it, you know, keeping in mind that it doesn't actually have a CD drive, but I mean, unless you're into retro computing or something, I would not really recommend you Windows XP. You know, you, you can only install some sort of middle-ish XP, not from the late period, because it doesn't have enough resources to run that really. And uh, how do you intend to browse the web or do reasonable things? So for me, neither of these is a real choice. To the people who ask what else shall I put on it, well, evidently things like Debian are a prime choice, right? Debian will run on this just nicely. But you can, of course, try your luck with the BSDs as well. I believe FreeBSD, NetBSD, OpenBSD, Dragonfly, BSD, and whatever other BSDs there are will run on it just happily. Maybe, though, you might have to fight the uh, graphics resolution or the wireless network card. Though, of course, you could always opt for a USB card and just, you know, not care all that much about it. So these are reasonable options. However, the one I truly do recommend you is called Slitas. Now that is a sort of minimalistic, though quite complete French Linux distribution now having a rolling release where, well, when you install it, you'll be surprised how little resources it uses. The default installation 
used on my disk after installation only something of just over 200 megabytes, which I of course extended a bit and about which I shall be talking more in a moment. But that is clearly an option worthy of further exploration and shall now be demonstrated. Now, if you have the 512 megabyte RAM model, you are fine to just go for the hardware itself. If you have less RAM, you can go for trickery, namely in particular create a virtual machine. And the nice thing here is you can give a virtual machine first more memory for the installation and then in the installation create a larger swap partition and then use that swap partition in order to emulate the apps like the presence of a RAM which you do not have. And to demonstrate it in an extreme case, after installation I have reduced the memory of my virtual machine to just 64 megabyte RAM. And as disk I have given it 2 gigabyte, uh, you know, playing as if I have the weaker EEE PC model. So let's start our Slitas installation so you get a bit of an impression of what we are talking about. Booting in 64 megabyte RAM will take a little longer than booting normally, but still it happens reasonably quickly. Also, by the way, on real hardware, where of course you do not just have 64 megabyte RAM. <laughs> yeah, here we're having a little bit of an issue that I am still fighting. I will need to adjust here the monitor resolution. Yeah, your default user is Tux and so is his password. Your default user uh, for, no, your default password for the root user is also a root. So, no, we do not want to check for any upgrades right now, but it tells you that your system is up to date and that you might continue updating packages because it is a rolling release distribution. Right, so that makes sense. Uh, I have already made myself a little bit at home here, as you can see, and we shall explore a little bit what it offers. To those of you who call the EEEPC lame or weak or something like that, do not forget that either you or definitely your parents used to lust after something like that, like the bad computer, which uh, if compared to your EEE PC looks, well, how shall I say, the EEE PC looks like an absolute supercomputer compared to that, though perhaps one can say the ASUS EEE PC lacks the blinking lights. So yes, from the aesthetics perspective, the bad computer certainly wins and at least is here as a proper desktop background. Now, everything here is in the rather usual manner. You're having here your virtual desktops, you can go under applications and you can check what sort of stuff you're having here and what sort of programs are pre-installed. Now one thing which is a bit of an issue in all such experiments is in which direction do you want to go? You cannot possibly cover every program when you're having such a weak machine and certainly not on to uh, gigabyte. Let's go to the system tools to give you a bit of a taste. So let's open here a bit of a terminal. Right, and uh, how does this get bigger? Okay, it doesn't. Select font perhaps. Let's make things a little more readable for you. 14. Yes, now, now we are alive. So first of all, let's see how much memory did we actually consume, right? We have 64 megabyte real. <laughs> we do not have too many, uh, we do not have too much free, right? But in essence, swap wise and so on, things look not so bad. And one can say that actually we still have memory free to do things. As to the installed base, even with the extras I will show you in a moment, I am living nicely. I have some over 300 megabytes free <laughs> on my file system here and some 
860 megabyte used. And now let's look at what you used with. Essentially, you can either choose when you have such a weak machine to make it a sort of terminal where you install the one fat Firefox and try to live through it, through web applications as much as you can. Like you're having online spreadsheets, online editors and whatnot and go for a moderately modern web-based system. That's not the, road, the route I took. I installed a couple of other programs. In particular, I wanted to have an office suit. So I got myself AbbeyWord, which is a, you know, word editor, like word like Thingy, where, where I can type my awesome letters, right? And the other thing I got was Gnumeric, which you certainly also know that's a spreadsheet application. So thereby one can say that that and a PDF viewer gives me the opportunity to do some work on Slitas in 800 something megabyte. Now I did that and I wanted to have a couple further development tools whereby let me let me just check my documents maybe I can show it to you okay documents not here home folder installed right let's go through what I actually went for so the one thing you will this is the um, command in order to install things right taspkg dash gi so what you will notice what is missing is that you do not actually have a python 3 installation there has been a packaging request in that direction but i haven't quite seen any result of it i must say that is perhaps the sorest thumb i am having here so no python 3 but there is gcc so you do have a c compiler i found fortran as well so we also have fortran we have a lisp and yeah, the rest of the things I picked was Abbey Word, Gnumeric, GV in order to watch postscript documents. I like to have Audacity, an awesome audio editor. I record my desktop in case I want to make a video of what's happening. Putty as a client of, you know, SSH, Telnet and serial connections and whatnot. Screen, well, one needs screen. And a couple other things <laughs> just like that. So that is what I got as packages. The one disadvantage Slitas may perhaps have if compared to Debian is that it has fewer and in some cases older packages. And as browser we are having Midori. Now I like Midori, but not everybody does. So that's for me the sort of browser that Firefox Fox could have remained. You know, like Firefox became quite a big piggy at some point, whereas Midori remained pretty nice as a browser. So let us look at Slitas, whether we'll find it on the web. We do. You're searching by default with DuckDuckGo. Oopsie, we got to Wikipedia. Well, that's not a very big tragedy. We can go back and go to its actual web page yeah there you go so as you can see Slitas itself is actually working rather nicely I um, can can navigate around I can go to download in order to get it yeah and so forth basically live on the command line with uh, not on the command line live live on the web with Slitas so we have a decent browser, but not too modern, where it in particular will fail is unfortunately Twitter. If I go to twitter.com, you know, it is whining that this browser is not supported. So that's not exactly nice, but <laughs> it's what you deal with when you have a moderately, moderately unknown browser. Now, if you would like to add more packages than there are available in the default Slitas repositories, there are several venues you can 
you can undertake. The one of them is of course to compile things yourself. Meh, I wouldn't exactly advise that on a very resource starved machine. The other thing you can do, however, is to install DOSBox, which is opening you the world of MS-DOS programs, which, if you remember, have once upon a time governed the world like dinosaurs millions of years ago. Just this wasn't millions of years ago and you have a lot of nice DOS programs. The other thing you can actually have is a Java runtime environment. And if I do that, well then that I used in order to get Prolog. See, I got here gprolog, which is a Java Prolog interpreter. And I can run that indeed uh, by opening here. <laughs> Oopsie, this is not Ubuntu. So my shortcuts are not the usual ones. Let's get an X term. Where is my X term? Ah, down there. It opens it in a weird place. So if I go to the desktop and if I go to the G prolog, oops, CDG, right? Then I can say Java jar. What was it called? Jib console dot jar. And so I got my the Java prolog running, right? And like I could say here, I don't know, something like man of X, but I haven't given any such predicate, so it's undefined and I can just say halt in order to get out of it. But you do have Lisp and prolog here. What you lack is a more modern Python than, than Python 2, right? But nonetheless, it offers you the possibility to develop, do office work, browse a little bit the, the web, and if you install the default, you even get things like uh, a lot of yeah games, if you're into that. But you might as well go for MS-DOS games and just play them, you know, on DOSBox, given that DOS always did have awesome games. So with that, I hope you have gained a good impression of Slitas. There isn't really much more to it. It is just a very simple distribution, very pleasant to use. Clearly recommend it if you have an ASUS EEE PC and you can just whack it onto the disk. And perhaps that last part deserves a little bit more attention. So. All right, now before I conclude this video, just let me make one final remark. Namely, people will ask themselves, so, you know, you installed this machine nicely, everything is working fine, you configured it in your very nice virtual box, how can you get it out of here? Now, people will propose you ways of, you know, converting the virtual box image and whatnot. I propose something simpler. See, we do have a network connection to the main computer. So instead of uh, mucking around with the disk itself, uh, I propose to just simply transfer it over the network. In our main box, we create a netcat listener, okay? And here we simply contact our main box, you know, ping 10 Three, one. you will see that we have a ping, so we have a contact to it. And then we can simply become root. And then we can cat def, oopsie, German keyboard, def sda into, no, let's pipe that, into netcat 10031 port 888. Nine. Was it that what we were saying here? Yes. So once we do that, now it took it. And you'll see that easily if I say ls slitas.dd l actually. So you see its size. So you can see, let's make it lh. So it's now 134 megabyte and it keeps growing. And that way, 
I will be able to transfer the entire disk from the virtual box as a DD image onto my real computer as a file. And from there I can just take that file and you know DD it using some if I want minimalistic other Linux distribution onto my EEE PC and given that this is for a 2 gigabyte model like disk wise 2 gigabyte model with 512 megabytes of swap space I am actually rather confident that this would be a solution for any EEE PC I might come across and knowing myself I would not guarantee that I won't come across a couple more and if you would like to try them out I can heartily recommend them to you they are quirky they are little they are funny they are nice you would love them I'm sure of it so yeah <laughs> I won't keep you around any longer because uh, that will take an eternity until it's done so thanks for watching have a great day and from me goodbye <laughs>